Love it. We'll get started in a minute, um, but it's just great. Uh, they're on time. We're logging in. You're seeing the announcements roll and some great selfies from last Sunday and the week before. <laughs> Bill and Stephanie. <laughs> and from Louisiana. See you. And as we get older, it increases the value of what's going on. That's right. The people who've been there for a while. That's so so that don't have to turn on now. Now. Uh, So good morning, everyone. Pastor Jay Williams here, a lead pastor of our uh, congregation as we gather. We are Union Church, virtual, digital, uh, but still we are family indeed as we are gathered uh, in this place, uh, in these places known as our homes. Uh, we're just grateful to be together as uh, family and friends. Indeed, uh, at Union, you are family, and we say uh, welcome especially to those who are joining us for the very first time, a welcome to Union. We are glad that you are with us as we continue to uh, grow and expand as a faith community that is indeed uh, doing great things. We want you, as we uh, enter into this time of worship uh, together, uh, to know that um, uh, the worship bulletin is online, a PDF version. If you have uh, multiple screens, you can go to unionboston.org forward slash online and pull that down. But don't worry, uh, all of the lyrics will be on uh, the screen. Uh, so that's just a reference uh, for you. We invite you to go ahead and note your attendance in the chat. We are excited um, that you're here and we want to know that you're here. Uh, and of course, if there's multiple people worshiping uh, in the same space, uh, in one login, go ahead and note uh, who and how many folks are there worshiping with you. It is helping us uh, to track our attendance and our worship attendance. And as uh, somebody said earlier, uh, that this is their third week in a row uh, and worship attendance is up. So we're excited about uh, the opportunity for us to gather. As uh, you do watch on, on Zoom, if you go to the upper right hand corner of your Zoom app screen, uh, there's something called gallery view. You can touch the gallery view, which will allow you to see uh, more faces on the screen when it's not spotlighted. Uh, and then you can scroll through and see as many of the now 135 participants, 136 uh, that are logged on. Uh, so we can just take in the beauty of each other's uh, faces. Amen. I'm going to go ahead uh, and invite as we gather. Uh, Cyrus, go ahead and unmute uh, the lines uh, and give this opportunity for one another uh, just to say words of peace uh, as we are family together at Union. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Yeah. Peace be with everybody. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Good morning. Good morning. Peace be with you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Peace be with you. Good morning. 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 Uh, indeed, we said it last week, as we go ahead and, and mute, uh, we said it last week, but um, uh, Christ is indeed risen. Uh, and it's appropriate as the spirit of resurrection continues to rise uh, in our hearts, in our spirits, in our minds, that uh, we sing a congregational song, uh, let it rise, let the glory of the Lord rise among us, let the power of the Lord rise rise among us. The lyrics are going to be on the screen, so we invite you uh, to join 
and sing along as we have our opening congregational song. Let's sing together. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Glory of the Lord rise among us. Praise of the King. Let the glory rise among us. Glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praise of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Say, oh, 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 Got it now. The next one says, Let the songs of the Lord, let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Songs of the Lord rise among us. Joy of our King rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Beloved, this is Ashley Johnson. I would greatly appreciate it if you would pray with me. Oh, gracious God, who is always here and ready to hear our prayers, how deeply we need you. For this togetherness we give you great thanks and for the opportunity to praise to see your glory and your power rise among us to exchange signs of peace to sing and to listen and to breathe for these opportunities we are incredibly grateful as we move forward in this time of worship we hold tenderly the collective suffering of our world at this time. We grieve for there are many, too many, lives that have been lost. We remember the vulnerable lives that are being threatened. 
we ache for ourselves and our neighbors, standing before an uncertain future and in our grieving and remembering and in our aching, we pray. We pray that you would open our hearts, move in our hearts so that we might see with greater clarity what an empty tomb means for us what the resurrection means for those who are living in such uncertain times. We pray God for the strength and the courage to see and perceive, to see a future of wholeness and justice and abundance and health that may not yet exist. Ready us, loving God, to receive the grace that awaits us in this virtual service and beyond so that we can do the work of extending the vibrations of your love. It is in the matchless name of Jesus that we pray and rejoice. Amen. Good morning, Union. I'm Crystal Collier and today's scripture reading will be John chapter 20 verses 19 through 31. John chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was the evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the crowds, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the 12, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the marks of the nails in his hand and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have, his, may have life in his name, life in his name. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God indeed. Again, we say welcome uh, to our worship service. If you haven't already uh, put your uh, attendance in the chat, we want to encourage you to go ahead and do that. And as we transition uh, from uh, the spoken word as read from the Gospel of John uh, into our moment of uh, preaching by Pastor Nikki, we want to invite you to use the chat uh, as a, kind of a talkback feature as Pastor Nikki is preaching. Uh, in the Black Church tradition, we use call and response. Uh, so we're going to use the chat uh, to go ahead and express our gratitude for the word that is going forth. But before uh, we hear from Pastor Nikki, uh, why don't we prepare our hearts uh, through a, minist a ministry of music. It's from uh, November 2019, a recording of our gospel ensemble, Come Before God's Presence with Thanksgiving. Uh, why don't we be blessed as our ensemble ministers to us? Come before his presence with thanksgiving. 
Would you all join me in a word of prayer this morning? Holy God, you are worthy of our praise. On this day and every other day, oh God, we thank you that you are here. You are here. You are here. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, beloved, I am, uh, I don't know about you, but I'm certainly learning a lot about what it means to be human in this season, uh, about our ability to thrive in the midst of unprecedented circumstances, about the will of the human spirit that seems to get us up out of bed and out to those essential places even in those moments where yesterday and today and tomorrow just seem to kind of blend together into this one endless season that simply will not end. See, I'm learning that crowds mean a lot more to me than they used to. That something as simple as gathering in a sanctuary on Sunday holds more beauty for me now than ever before. I'm learning that love can look like a lot of different things. And that physical distance cannot stop the Holy Spirit from blowing into our homes, our rooms, these tiny windows we get into people's lives. I'm learning, as I'm sure we're all learning, that the things designed to break us might try, but will always fail 
to separate us from the love of God. You see, but I'm getting ahead of myself this morning because the other thing that I've learned in the midst of this pandemic is that it's actually quite difficult to preach a sermon that doesn't sound like some kind of doomsday prophecy, something about preaching into a web camera, sitting in a house that you have not left for four whole weeks feels more like those dystopian fictions we all read in high school than the promises of God being fulfilled. You see, if I had a nickel for every time I've ever heard some jack leg preacher throw around the word apocalypse, yelling about the end of times just to incite fear of the world and the people in it, I would have enough money to buy one of those $20 million prosperity jets. But I don't get paid to capitalize off of the world's suffering as some do. I don't profit from fear. I don't make investments in chaos. I don't gain more wealth or power or fame when society collapses. I cannot fathom such a thing. Because prophetic preaching will not paint portraits of despair and the end of times without also reminding you that the beginning is near. See, let me tell you something about biblical prophecies. Those scary ones that we usually skip over in Bible study because they're, they're too dark or confusing. You see, prophets thank God for waking them up in the morning as we all do. But they also thank God for opening their eyes. Eyes to see that this, this world we are living in is not the way that things should be. When game show host presidents delay stimulus checks just to print his name on them, when an administration is more concerned with how much money we can make as opposed to how many lives have been lost, when privileged protesters block roadways to hospitals with signs decrying, I want my hair cut, it wakes us up. It opens our eyes, a fog has been lifted. You see, they say that something about viruses can lay dormant in the body, infecting otherwise healthy persons so quietly and so swiftly that you do not realize there was ever a problem until it seems like the whole world is sick. The world has been sick for quite some time. And the scene that I just painted might not be a pretty one, but it is a necessary one to preach because it is not and cannot be the way things remain. So you see, you are not far from God because all you can see is the world's despair. You are a prophet. Your eyes are open and your heart, it will not let you close them again. You see, I need to tell you all about the disciple named Thomas on this day, whose eyes were also open. You see, Jesus had died. He was dead. Jesus the healer, Jesus the miracle worker, Jesus the son of God was dead. There was no way around this one. Thomas watched as the state quite literally fumbled their way through executing hope right out there in the open. Thomas watched as people in power killed love incarnate and said that it was somehow for the greater good. He was not interested in Easter proclamations quite yet because he could not even fathom what had just happened. What was happening? Who are we, I imagine him asking, that we could wound love in such a way that we are capable of stealing the breath of life, of moving on to the next body to destroy before this one has been properly grieved. Who are we? I can just hear him saying, that this can happen to us. What is going on here? And so it's no surprise to me at all when we turn to this story in the Gospel of John, where the resurrected Jesus appears to his terrified disciples and breathes peace upon them, that Thomas is not there. John doesn't tell us where he was because John was not with Thomas, but I'm willing to bet those existential questions he was holding on to got so heavy he couldn't help but be by himself. And so when Thomas returns and his friends look at him with hope and expectation proclaiming, we have seen the Lord, you can understand why he may just be a bit suspicious. You see, he's not interested in getting back to business as usual, 
No, not when the world is still collapsing around him. Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, he says, I will not believe. Don't talk to me about hope, says Thomas, before acknowledging the wounds. See, I'm reminded on this day of this short news clip from earlier this week where an EMT is asked how he's been shown thanks during this time. I've been sent more pizza than ever before, he says, but I don't need pizza. I need health care because if I get sick tomorrow, I cannot even afford to call the same ambulance I drive every day. You see, I cannot help but think of this man who refuses to rush to the hope in humanity's kindness without first pointing towards the gaping wounds in our collective social body. You see, this right here is a decidedly apocalyptic thing to do, apocalypse. It comes from the Greek, the Greek word apocalypsis, which quite literally refers to an unveiling, an uncovering, a revelation that could not have otherwise been seen, to pull back the veil, Something that says, I will not settle for your surface level answers and explanations. I wanna know what's really going on here. There is something so powerfully terrifying about revealing what is underneath this all. You see, it's like pulling back the garments of a resurrected Jesus and witnessing the wounds still left in his side. It is vulnerable, it is fragile. And it requires so much care to reach out and touch it without making the pain any worse. Make no mistake, when the empire is made to be your God, when the pursuit of productivity and upholding the way the system has always been is our salvation, People who refuse to accept hope at face value will look like giant doubters, faithless cowards, people who just cannot trust that everything will be all right. Sometimes we so badly want the system to get back to normal that we do not realize it was the system that was killing us all along. You see, this is my doomsday sermon, my end of the world prophecy, that what would end is a world where we hear more talk about saving dollars than saving lives, where white supremacy rears its ugly head in communities made most vulnerable this season, where people otherwise thought disposable, fast food workers and grocery store clerks are suddenly bearing the weight of our crisis on their back. I would hope this is the end of times. I will not let go of Thomas and his stubborn insistence on seeing where it hurts. I will not let go of his story because I am willing to bet that on that fateful walk alone where he missed the revelation of the risen Christ amidst his friends, Thomas did a little wrestling of his own. Wrestling that sounded like, how am I even allowed to feel this upset when the hope of the whole world is gone? How can I even pay attention to these thoughts racing in my head about what my tomorrow will look like, who I need to be, what I can be capable of in this season when everything we ever thought true is crumbling like burnt paper in our hands. I bet he thought that the concerns of his heart were insignificant in the grand scheme of things, but he did not realize that these things we tell ourselves are insignificant might actually be where the power of the holy and living God indwells. So when Thomas finds himself back in the house a week later and the resurrected Jesus appears in the room, he does not get a lecture on faithfulness or a corrective word about getting over himself in order to be a better disciple. No, Jesus says, peace be with you. Walks directly over to Thomas, takes his hand and says, here, touch the wound, see the piercings. I can't imagine what kind of breath Thomas must have taken in as he gasped at the touch of Christ's side in that, that vulnerable moment where the cloak is pulled away and the wound beneath is revealed. I imagine something holy entered him then, like a new breath or a second wind, because hope was not dead. 
It was open and invitational and vulnerable and strong and fragile all at the same time. Hope was more real than ever before. This Eastertide sermon series that we're doing here at Union is called Empty. Empty tombs, empty churches, feeling empty inside because there is a divine power in those places where they'll tell you nothing of substance is going on. Places like where a disciple who's been mocked by a tradition that calls his insistence on remembering our pain a sign of doubt. Like a gaping wound they want so badly to desperately cover up without first witnessing the power of the Holy Spirit inside. Like a world that wants to tell you your acknowledgement of its despair is a sign of your inability to cope. But that is not the gospel story. That is not the Jesus way. Because in this room where Thomas finds himself, Jesus pulls back the veil and invites him to touch this wounded body. Because even the resurrected Jesus refuses to let go of the world's pain. Because he will not leave earth and go to move on to better things. He will bear the marks and invite you to see them when all hope is lost. And he will gift you with a holy gasp that fills your lungs with more holy blessed spirit than you've ever felt before. You are not lost or abandoned or backsliding because your eyes have been opened and all you can see is chaos. You are a disciple. You are like a prophet. And maybe all I need to give you on this morning is permission to gasp at this holy vulnerability, this mark of suffering, this resurrected Jesus who is here in the room today. Maybe all I need you to do is convince you to fix your eyes on him, the one who went to hell and back and still would not forget about your pain. Maybe I need to remind you that when we pull back the cloak, unveil what has been hidden, it is gruesome and it is scary and it is painful, but it is also the moment we receive this deep and abundant abiding spirit that will not give up on us. It is this inhale that is the holiest of things. Because when you breathe back out again and speak into this indescribable chaos, the same spirit that transformed death into new life is the one that you too are breathing over the whole of this world. So this is my doomsday prophecy, that the beginning is surely near, that asking where it hurts, witnessing the wounds, is the beginning of any kind of healing. That you are not just awake this morning. God opened your eyes, and maybe they're fixated right where they need to be. So hear me very clearly when I say this, dear church. There is a hope here. It's a hope that is open and invitational and vulnerable and strong and fragile all at the same time because he is risen. He is here. We have seen the Lord. So peace be with you. May it be so. Amen.
together. Indeed, uh, beloved, the beginning is near. Better days are coming. We bless God for Simona Plowman, our director of music's uh, daughter. We uh, thank you for her witness. I don't know if there could have been a better uh, pairing uh, between Plamen and Simona and, and that uh, musical reflection and the message. The beginning is near. That's our doomsday prophecy. The better days are coming when we join with the resurrected Christ and we breathe we confront the devastating and destructive powers of this world and we invite one another to touch the wounds, to confront the reality, but still to breathe, to breathe in because the spirit is alive. The spirit of resurrection is alive. The spirit of love is alive. So beloved, uh, in this moment, as the spirit speaks to us, you're part of the Union Worshiping Community and you desire to join with us, to unite with us, uh, to mark uh, what God is doing in our lives as community and want to mark it as something special, as unique, as formal. I invite you to go to unionboston.org forward slash join. Uh, we would love Pastor Nikki and I to have a conversation with you so that we can, during even in this virtual space, celebrate a ritual of membership with you. Better days are coming. Union, we're growing. The spirit is alive and we thank God for the message. Better days. Better days. Better days. Glory be to God. Amen. Yes, we are incredibly blessed here at Union. 
by so much talent, by so many people that are willing to have the spirit just move through them to inspire us. So Union this morning, it's now time for the offering. My name's Kyle, I'm one of the student ministers here at Union. And although we can't pass the plate, we can still give. And giving is an act of worship. We realize that these are hard times for everyone. So as you are able, you can support our ongoing ministry during these difficult times by going to unionboston.org slash give. Or you can text to give. Just text the dollar amount to 84321. To follow the instructions. Thank you in advance. And yes, Union, it is time for the offering. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Alleluia. Hallelujah, indeed, which is the highest praise. We are uh, grateful and thankful uh, that you continue to support uh, this year church family uh, union during these difficult uh, times and, and your gifts uh, make it possible to do what we're doing. Uh, we want to go ahead. I invite you to put your hands together one more time and bless God for a wonderful message from our assistant pastor, Pastor uh, Nikki. I mean, goodness, I, saw, I was watching the chat contributing to it. Uh, indeed, we had lots to say, uh, the, the, the theological depth of it, um, the, the, the practical ethical call, the prophetic word uh, to, to say yes, that uh, the, the, the spiritual is not disconnected from the material. <laughs> All right, uh, that, that uh, the word that God is speaking to us actually speaks directly to the situation that we find ourselves in and that, that we, uh, as a people of faith, are called to be prophetic witnesses and that there's resources in the text that help us uh, to respond, uh, to think our way through this, out of this, because indeed the beginning is near. Uh, so we're grateful indeed for uh, Pastor Nikki. We're so grateful for uh, the giftedness that is in our community and Simona and Paul. Uh, what a, a dynamic duo. Bless God for them. Uh, better days are coming. Stay focused. Stay focused, Simona saying, and never lose sight because Christ is right here with us, walking with us, uh, guiding us uh, during these uh, times. We want to take uh, some opportunity as we come to the close of the service, and it was uh, suggested to me that, yeah, if, if you're looking for uh, membership or curious, uh, you can also just put it in the chat. One of our chat moderators uh, will be in touch with you. Um, uh, just give your name, uh, share um, that you're, you know, you like a pastor to talk to you about membership, or if you'd like a pastor to, to reach out to you about something else, go ahead and use our chat feature and also uh, the technology, unionboston.org slash on. Uh, dot org forward slash join. 
Okay, as we uh, come to the close of service, we want you to know that uh, we are reaching out. Our care teams are launching uh, this week. Uh, you'll be looking for, uh, you'll be receiving a call from one of our care team members. We've got 30 folks, 30 volunteers uh, who will be reaching out to all of our, uh, our membership in the coming days. Uh, definitely uh, join us in, in this uh, great um, task of, of being in touch with one another as a family. Uh, we're seeking to care for one another uh, indeed. So make sure we've got all your contact information. We'd love to reach out to you. I want to enjoy, invite you to join us for our spiritual refreshes uh, during the week on Monday. That's tomorrow, 7 p.m. We gather for fellowship, a check-in. Then on Wednesdays at 7 a.m., uh, we gather for a prayer at 7 a.m. And at noon on Fridays, we have an opportunity to uh, be in a relationship through a guided meditation, through song and music and spoken word. Really great opportunities for us to reset our spirits and to press on into what's ahead. If you're not on our email list already uh, and we need your contact information, uh, please provide it to us uh, so we can be in touch with you by phone, uh, via email, go to unionboston.org forward slash enews, uh, sign up so that we might um, uh, be in best touch with you as uh, possible. Also, if you're going through a hard time, we're all going through a hard time in some ways, but if you have particular uh, needs of, of food, of rental assistance, uh, other material support, your church is here uh, for you. We are already making uh, food uh, deliveries to uh, people's homes. Uh, as uh, the first of the month comes up in May, uh, if you are in need of, of some help uh, to, to bridge a, a gap, uh, please do uh, be in touch directly with me, Reverend J at unionboston.org, uh, and uh, we'll be happy to uh, support you. Uh, also, got a, was on a call this week uh, with uh, the governor, a small group of clergy, uh, and uh, then got a word from the governor's office as well as uh, the attorney general of the Commonwealth that there is some concern that folks are not uh, going to the hospital or being in touch with their uh, primary care providers if they're feeling ill because uh, for other conditions not necessarily related to COVID-19. Um, but if you are, are, are needing medical care, uh, please do be in touch. Don't let concerns around COVID uh, keep you from uh, getting the care that you need. Our hospitals and healthcare providers are taking all the precautions uh, so that there's no uh, transfer, but definitely be in touch with your uh, healthcare providers. Go to the hospital if you are suffering um, and you need help. Uh, this isn't a time to, to pull back. It is indeed a time for us to get all the care uh, that we uh, need. Uh, beloved, uh, indeed, again, we are grateful and thankful for all that God is doing. Uh, we're going to get out the video of this service as soon as we can. Already, uh, Robert put up the in the, in the chat a link to uh, Simona and Plamen's uh, Better Days. Uh, you can actually go ahead and watch that again uh, now. Indeed, we are grateful for all those who make uh, this uh, day uh, possible, our planning team, uh, but particularly the technical expertise of, uh, of Robert in video editing and, and Cyrus in audio mixing, our musicians, our ministerial team. Yeah, I see, go ahead, put your hands together. Thanks, Ryan. I uh, see you. Uh, we, we're, a, a, it takes a lot to execute a, a service uh, that is remote, but still participatory uh, and seamless. So we are, are grateful uh, indeed. Uh, blessings to all. And if you're interested in, in contributing, helping, uh, be in touch with us. We're, we're expanding how we serve in many ways. Uh, so as we come to the, the close of the service, I'm gonna turn it over to Pastor Nikki to guide us in prayer and then we will sing our way out of here. Amen. Beloved, let's pray. Holy and loving and remarkable God, you hear us when we cry out to you. 
Oh God, from the privacy of our homes to this corporate worship, you know us, you see us, you hear us, you save us, oh God, save us again on this day from anything that is holding us down. Won't you hit us with a holy gasp, O oh God, of a new spirit that might breathe life into us again. Give us our second wind. Wake us up, give us eyes to see, and remind us that he is risen indeed. He is here before us, and that there is no wound, even the resurrected Christ won't bear. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we say amen, amen, and amen. Let us sing together. can unmute yourself if you like at this time and you can say farewell uh, to one another. Go and have peace. a great day. Have a great day, everyone. Hey, have a great week. Good day and a great week. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Love you, Pastor Jay. Bye. Love you all. Bye. Bye. So great to hear the voices. Bye. 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 That was wonderful. Pastor Nikki. Wonderful, Nikki. Pastor Nikki. Thanks, Thank Thank Pastor Jay. John and Margaret. Thank Buffalo. Great sermon. <laughs> Music. There's somebody from Buffalo. I saw mom and dad. From Buffalo. Thank you, Pastor Jay. Oh, it's so great to see you. Everybody. Hello. Hey, Pastor Jay. I miss you guys. Pastor okay. Carolyn. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bram. So bless you. Blessings, everybody. Hey, oh, there we go. Hey, Amen. Everybody <laughs> still there? Hey, no. Carolyn and Leon. Hey, Carolyn. Hey, Carolyn. Hey, Carolyn. Hey, Carolyn. Hey, have a great week. Have a great week. Last and great week. Hey, Omi, I see you. <laughs> I see you, hey, Naomi. Hey, hold on. I heard some voices. It's James. It sounded like James. Hey, the fam is there. I love it. <laughs> Hey, Omi. So amazing. Bye, Bye Ruby. God will oh, see you in two months. God will. Hi, sweetie. Margaret, oh, my track coach. Good service, huh? And my Bye. history teacher, John hey, McTighe. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This For is one, amazing. Miss <laughs> go. oh. Portia. Hey, so great to see y'all. Portia. Portia. Hey, Carolyn. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Hello. And Collins. Hello. Andy and Jennifer. Hi. Hey. Cool. Oh, this service. is church, y'all. Family service. <laughs> department looks good. We surely had a word today. Oh, I, wait, I think it was a picture. We had a word. A word indeed. Indeed. So Hi. good. William. Alberts. <laughs> Hey, Mira. Hi, oh, see you, Mira and Ophelia Rose. <laughs> 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 yeah. Mother Elderkin. That's me. <laughs> Look at you. 100 <laughs> years young. <laughs> Kara, hey Ophelia. Oh my gosh, you look great. Everybody look at this is what a hundred years looks like right there. No. Oh. 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 Good morning. Good morning. And I heard you got a cell phone too. I'm about to text you. you gave me your number. It's great to see you. To see you. Oh my gosh. So good. Good. That is good. Wow. It's wonderful. This warms my heart. Leslie. 
Christmas. Happy Easter, Andy. Um, Giselle. I can't see you guys. Still in Brazil? I am. Jane Lawrence. God willing, I'll be back in two months. Abraham. God willing, I'll be back. Still now. Still worshiping. That's it. Still worshiping. Oh my gosh. Who is Brazil? Brazil. Uh, and I right. miss you guys so much. <laughs> oh, wow. I miss you as well. Hey, hey, Thank you. Yeah. Miss you. Hey, Come back so now. Well. Hey. <laughs> hey, hey. Way two things open back up. <laughs> I have to. Hey. 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 I'm in Brazil and I, I can't get a flight out. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, I I'm the only leaf on the tree. But I'm still at church. Wow. Yes. <laughs> so good. <laughs> still at church. Love to everybody. Love to everybody. Love Have a wonderful week. You too. Good care. everyone. Hey, Phyllis. Hi, Phyllis. See you next Sunday. Phyllis, are you? Are you outside, Phyllis? No, I'm in the I'm in the sun room on the Sunday. The, oh, the Sunday. Right. Okay. The Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Kyle. Hi, Kyle. Yes. Oh, Carlton. Hello. Jane. Hi, Andy. Carlton. Yes. Hey. Good to see you. Good to hey, see Andy, you. I can't hey. go outside here. We're having a thunderstorm. Oh, oh in Texas? Yeah. <laughs> Scary out. But we, it, well, it snowed here yesterday, Jane. So right. there's I that. <laughs> so there's that. Count your blessings. Well, the rain. You don't have to shovel it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word. <laughs> so yeah. good to see everybody. Yeah. Good to see you too. Can't let go. <laughs> I know, right? We're, all yeah. right. We'll go in peace, everybody. We'll see you okay. next week. Uh, see you at our check ins you. this week. Peace be to you. Together tomorrow at 7 Praise be. Peace be to you. Bye. 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 Go in peace.